Hi, Joe Cerrone, part two. Today I'm going to go through the reception room heat, reception room seating for the conference room. And this information is taken straight from the AutoCAD for Interior Design book at the end of the chapter, Project 14 3. And so you're to draw the objects two dimensionally, which I made a video for, and this is how to model the parts. And so if I go to AutoCAD, here's my, here's my uh, furniture. And if you drew it, you would have drawn it two dimensionally. And then what you can do is you can switch over the workspace to 3D modeling and then change the view to an isometric. If we look at the exercise information we're going to start, I think we'll start by modeling. Um, I guess we'll start with the chair because it's kind of at the edge here. And so we'll model the chair by using either press pull or extrude. And I'm going to show you both methods because press pull is a little too easy sometimes. And sometimes it doesn't work. Um, with that said, what I'm going to do here is I'm going to go to my layer properties. And I'm going to make a layer called 3D Furniture. And so let's find a color and line type that we like. And then we'll start a new one. And we'll call it 3D Furniture. And you can't see it because the darn thing is hovering over a toolbar. All right, there we go. And so we have that, and I'm going to make the color just a little off so I can see the difference between the dark blue and the light blue. And then I'm going to make that layer current. Okay, let's get going. So we can take these chairs and we can model them. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to start by modeling the, let's do the sides of the chair. And so those are going to be 27 inches tall. Now, if press pull works properly, we can hover right here and then we can pull that up and type in 27 and that'll create that geometry. And then we can do the same for the back. I like to work in 2D wireframe, but we can also toggle over to conceptual. And what you'll find is you kind of have to toggle back and forth between conceptual or if you like to use x-ray you can kind of see through it because it sometimes has difficulty selecting objects through surfaces and by having it in 2d wireframe it works very well so we'll press pull this other side here and we'll say 27 and then for the center of it that one is going to be a thickness of eight inches and so we'll click on that and then we'll pull that up eight inches and then what we'll do is we'll move that nine inches and so we'll use the move gizmo and we'll click on it and then we'll move that up i think i i'm not sure if i'm moving it right so let me turn that to a solid and let's try that again There we go. And so you grab the rocket. I call it a rocket. It's the Z height. And so the Z will be blue. The X and Y appropriate are green and red. So we'll grab the Z axis and then we'll just bring that up and we'll bring that up nine inches. So we'll type nine and hit enter. Hit escape. And that completes the model of the chair. Now the parts will fall apart if I move them because I haven't put them all together. So they're still just shapes. And so to glue them together, you're going to use the union command. And so we'll go here to solid union and then we'll select all of those shapes. Hit enter and you'll see the chair kind of changes. So the seams disappear and it, it puts everything together. I kind of liked it a little bit before we unioned everything. It was a little softer. 
So that's the chair. And then we can go through and we can copy that chair and rotate it to do the other parts. And I'll save that. Um, we're going to do the corner table next. And the corner table is 26 inches tall. It's just a square. Now, when they did this with the radiuses, we can have a little fun with it where we can, maybe we want this in the center to be glass or something like that. Um, we could also use some commands like solid fillet or solid chamfer to accomplish the same thing, but we really don't need the inside line or the inside perimeter to do that. So we'll see how that goes as we start to model it. I'm gonna make another layer. I like to keep objects in 3D on separate layers. And so here's this 3D furniture and I'm just gonna say coffee table or this was corner table. We'll say 3D. AutoCAD is a very layer centric type program. And let's give this a color. We'll say that they're gonna put it here at the college and we'll use some of their color swatches. All right, the part is 26 inches tall. So what we can do, if we're not gonna use press pull, we'll use extrude. And press extrude is a little bit more work because press pull creates a boundary shape and then it uses the extrude command. So it's like a macro, it does two things at once. If we just use the extrude command, then what we need to do is we need to have a, a boundary shape. In other words, these have to be a region or they have to be closed polylines because if we extrude them just like they are as lines, what happens is we'll get what's called a surface. And so if I do a quick properties on that, you'll see that it's a surface. And we can't make Boolean objects. We can't 3D print because it doesn't have volume. They're like eggshells. So it's important to use the region command. I'm just gonna type it in. And then I'm gonna select the parts in the middle. and hit enter. And then I'll do the same for the parts around the outside. So we'll go and we'll say region again. It wouldn't be a bad idea maybe to choose a different color for that. Um, I'm gonna go and do that. And so we'll go to layer properties. And we're at the, that's why, cause I'm on. Well, regardless, I think uh, I think we can just change the color. And so I'm just going to say color. And I'm going to go with, um, let's go with something that looks a little bit like wood. And then I'm going to do the same thing, region. And I'm going to select the outside edges. Hit enter. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to extrude and move those objects. I'm going to use um, the 3D move to move the center of the part up to 26 inches. And so if I use the move gizmo and I select the center, grab the rocket, I can pull that up and I'll say 26. And so we'll say that that's the glass. And then we'll do the same for the outside shape. And then we'll subtract the center from the outside. Now, before I subtract it, it'll consume it. So I'll have a hole in the middle. So I really need two of them when I think about it. And so as I think about this, I'm going to copy this one over to the side. And so I'll say copy and I'll select this. And this is just one of my techniques from teaching CAD for so many years. By having a secondary one, we'll be able to then put it on top of where it was removed when we do the Boolean operation. And so now I'm going to extrude the other part. And so I'll say extrude and I'll select it. I'll hit enter and then I'll extrude that up 26. And then I'll subtract the center. And so we'll go over here to our Boolean operations and I'll say solid subtract. Select the big piece 
hit enter, and then subtract the glass from it, hit enter. And then if we look at this, um, it doesn't look like it subtracted it. Let's see what happens when I delete that. Yeah, it did not. So somehow I failed on that one. So let's try that again. We'll go with subtract. We'll select the large shape, hit enter, and then the other piece to subtract from it. And I'm going to shift click on the outside because it looks like that's what I was doing. So what's going on here? Let's see when I move this. So it's not subtracting for some odd reason. Um, let's see, delete, undo. And let's go to wireframe and try it that way. You want to make sure that they represent and, and are in the same Z plane. And so there's the problem. It doesn't have a thickness to it. So I forgot to extrude it. All right, easy, easy to fix. So I'll just extrude this top of the table here down this way. And I guess my color is off. So I'm going to go back and change it back. And then I'm going to extrude that. And I'm going to go down so that they intersect. If it's above it, it's not going to subtract it. So I'll go down, we'll say one inch. It's a very strong table. And it's important if you've got kids and you've ever had them sit on something like that, like I have, it will break. So we'll subtract that. And we'll select the outside shape. Let's do it with a uh, conceptual. It's got a little bit more to see. Let's try it again. Maybe that wasn't the greatest idea. It was not, so let's go back. So we'll subtract that. We'll take the shape of the corner, hit enter, and then we'll subtract this. <clears throat> if we verify it, great. So this would be fine. You could actually have it just like that. And then you don't have to worry about things falling out. Or if we want to put the table top back on, we can go here and we want to extrude it. And we'll go down one inch and then I'll move it. And so I'll just use a regular move. You don't have to use 3D move, but you do need to use an O snap. And so you need to make sure that you grab like the corner here and then you put it in a corner shift middle mouse wheel to orbit. There we go. Okay, so that's how to model the corner table. And then the coffee table is really the same technique. And so as we go through and create these other shapes, uh, the coffee table is 17 inches. And so I'm going to go to, uh, I'm just going to go with a color. And we'll make our coffee table a little, yeah, I think we should probably do it the same color. And we'll extrude that. Now we could press pull it and do something interesting with it. I think what I'll do is I'll leave this one. It would actually look kind of good, I think, if we just did the same technique to it. So let's just do that. So we can then uh, region. And you can select the whole thing like this. And it'll create two regions, but they'll both be brown. And so if I wanted to change the inside shape of the other region, I guess it didn't do the inside shape. So that's fine. We'll region it again and I'll go color and I'll change it to that cyan and then I'll region that. You can set materials and make glass and do some really cool modeling stuff. So anybody who's played video games, 
you see these virtual worlds. This is what they do. They use 3D Studio, which was an Autodesk product. There we go. And so this is now set. And then we'll do the same thing where we'll 3D move the glass. Sometimes it seems to want to glitch. It's glitching big time. All right, since it doesn't want to cooperate, we'll just extrude the other side of it. So we'll go color and I'll go back to that brown and then I'll extrude that. a height of 17. And what we can do is do the same thing here. I can move it with um, a regular move command, but I have to use a polar input. And so I'll say at zero comma zero comma 17. And so the X coordinate zero, Y coordinate zero, and then it moves it 17 inches in the Z and um, I forgot to give it a base point. So I'll go and just pretend like I did. Let's do that again. Move, select the object, hit enter, give it a base point, which is what I forgot to do. And then go at zero comma zero comma 17. And now that's on the top. And then we can extrude that or we'll press pull that. And so here's how press pull works. If I go from wireframe to conceptual, if I use press pull, it'll actually subtract it out um, and it'll be sort of recessed. So if I press pull, click on the shape and then drive it down, I can drive it down one inch. There we go. And so, yeah, it's not quite what I thought it would be. Let's delete that. There it is. So when I press pulled it, I didn't get rid of the glass piece. And so I can undo that and I can leave the glass on, but you can see how the press pull command works. It'll actually combine the subtract with the extrude command. All right, so this video doesn't get too long. I'm just gonna go through shift middle mouse wheel, or you can just type in orbit. O-R-B-I-T, and it's on here under the view uh, tab, but I like to type in commands. And so if you orbit, you can just change the direction, kind of like playing a video game. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna copy the chairs. So I'll say copy. I'll select the chair, I'll hit enter. I'll grab an endpoint that I can track where the center of it is or the endpoint is. And then I'll go over here and it's kind of hard to see. I'm not sure if I could, I could have changed the visual style, but it looks like I got it. And then I'm going to go and drop one over here, hit escape. I'm going to rotate that 90 degrees with a rotate command. You could use 3D rotate, but it doesn't need it because it just needs to rotate in the X, Y axis. And so I'll just kind of spin this around. If you have your polar tracking, you'll get a there like that. You'll get a, a track mark when it hits the 90 and it's faster. I'm gonna to go to a X-ray so I can kind of see through it. And then I'm going to copy this from this endpoint over to this endpoint and then over to this endpoint, hit escape. I'm going to delete this. Let's go to a conceptual view. Okay, and so this is the conference room chairs and furniture. Um, what you can do is you can turn off the layers that are underneath it. And so this layer right here, if I go to the properties, is on the furniture layer. Hopefully that won't turn off my model. And so if I go to my layer properties, and I turn off the furniture layer. Yeah, then all the stuff from underneath it 
is gone. You don't really need the dimensions on it, but they look kind of cool in 3D, so I'm going to leave it. And then we can go to one of these tabs, like the floor plan tab, and you can have your 3D and your 2D, and it works pretty well. If I double click in this viewport, it's always a good idea to set the scale. This one's set at three quarters of an inch equals a foot. I'm going to unlock it and just dial it down just a little bit. Now put that like that. And then what I like to do is I like to make a viewport. It just looks cooler, looks a little bit more design. And so what I'll do is I'll create a viewport by saying, uh, let's go to the layer properties and let's go to our viewport layer. We'll make that current. And I'm gonna make the color for that viewport red so everybody can see it. Not that I like the color, but I just want people to see it. And so we'll say view, viewport, one viewport, and then I'll create a viewport. Double click in that viewport and then grab an isometric view. View, 3D view, Southeast isometric, view, visual style, conceptual. I don't like it when the icons are there, so we'll say U-C-S-I-C-O-N, and we'll turn that off, and so we'll say off, and there we go. Complete the technology, complete the information on the title block, set the scale, and if you want, you can also go and create a, a second view in the viewport, just double click in there. If you double click the middle mouse wheel, you'll get the geometry and then you can go with a 3D view. And then you can also go with a visual style. And again, fill out the title block information. Okay, save the file. So this will be project 14-3 and I'm gonna say this is gonna be the 3D part. Okay, that completes this video tutorial.